Hi there. My name's JK. You probably know me as Alucard J. Spends too much time on Unity Answers. Okay, this is a video that's going to accompany a guide I wrote last year called Slender Guide. What happened was about March 2012, there seemed to be a massive trend in questions, people asking about how to pick up papers and how to know if you're visible to an enemy. So I thought, I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but I thought I could answer some of these questions by writing this little guide. Now, I stress guide rather than tutorial because this was only meant to demonstrate the method, a way of doing these things. It was never meant to be a complete game or project for someone just to take out there add assets to it and come to it. It was a learning tool. But um, after I created the guide and wrote some packages, there was an explosion of questions. <laughs> people asking me how to add things, 50% of people just saying it doesn't work. So that's what this video is all about. I'm going to do my own guide here today. So I assume you can see the URL there. And we're going to start off. So I'm starting with a complete empty project. Absolutely nothing there. Nothing under my sleeve. And we'll begin. So what's this fellow saying? Okay. So yes, there were a couple of packages that I uploaded. And as I said, there was an explosion of questions, people asking how to use it. So I had to take them down because it really started to make a mess of things. Um, and as you can see, if you look through this question, with all the comments and suggestions and things that have been added, it's also become a mess, so I'll be cleaning this up and moving to forums and updating things. Okay, well anyway, I'd say the promise we'd begin. So, step one, create the terrain and add a first person control. Now, there's plenty of tutorials out there for this kind of thing, I'm not going to cover that in detail, okay? I've given a couple of good links there. The first one, the video one, watch the first ten minutes, you'll be sweet. Okay, so let's look at what we can do for ourselves. Here we go. You're probably going, terrain, great terrain. We'll give it some detail. Okay, some dynamics. So, splash around. Add a few different textures and lights and things like that. And before you know it, Start to build your own terrain. Wow. There we go. Okie dokie. So, this is what you'll be doing on your own. You'll be creating a terrain. In the meantime, what I've done, just before the video, is actually created a scene. I'll just quickly load that up. Okay. While that's loading, better accept it first. Okay, I'll go through the assets and what I've done there once it's loaded. Recording. So let's have a quick look at what's going on here. Alright, so we're going to create a terrain. It's up to you. There's plenty of tools out there to help you. Um, these links here, this is why this has to be updated. These links here are now updated since you before. Um, some of these can still be found on the asset store. Uh, the terrain assets and the height field pack. If you're having trouble with the terrain, getting your heights, Getting some mountains, make it look pretty cool. Check out the height field pack. There's 10 terrains there. The preset, I mean, that'd be great for FPS, adventure, exploration, horror survival, anything like that. Okay, and um, one of my favorites for manipulating it was the terrain toolkit. Um, I should have found out more about this in the author. Oops. Um, it's a great little kit. You can Give it a set of textures. You can also create random heights and random maps based on Berlin, different noises, this and that. And then after that, what's great about it is you can actually set what height, what texture begins and finishes. So for example, if you say a low level coming out of a beach, you could say, okay, up to the first meter is sand, then we're going to go sand into the grass, and then grass into the forest, and then up to the top, we go forest into rocks. And just playing around, it's a bit of blend those textures for you. Right. Make my unit used to the loading. Um, apart from that, Google. Check out any tile level textures you can find. Grass, things like that. Or simply go through every of the Unity projects. Now, 
I haven't done anything published with the Unity stuff, but as far as I'm aware, you're allowed to use their assets in your own projects, and for this, my own personal use, I really can't see a problem. So, I'll be using all their assets. Now, when that finishes loading, you'll also see I picked up a few buildings and that the assets that are just to flesh out just a little bit. And I also picked up some trees. Alright, so let's have a look. Okay, so I've got a building shed. Okay, a groovy. Okay, so we've got that was a nice little demo there, and I thought I'd really like to all the trees. So I grabbed their trees. I did have to add colliders to them, but as I say, follow up on a terrain tutorial if you want to add trees, recreation, colliders, all that kind of stuff. That's what it comes. Oil tanker. Basically, anything you want to flesh out your scene with, um, you can make it in a futuristic setting, like a cyborg or something. Sort of, I think it was Kiski I was watching. The, uh, zombie robots. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, okay, yep, yeah, there was another one, Shinetti Town. Pretty much, this is what my map is dominated with because I only spent about five minutes before I started this video. Okay, so let's have a look at my terrain. So, in all this talking, you probably hopefully created your own terrain. Okay. The height map and the textures, this is what I was talking about with the terrain toolkit. You can see as the height levels up, increase different levels, which is really fantastic. Okay. So, Get comfortable, get artistic, get creative, see what you can make out of your whole world. And there you have it. Some terrain, and what you want is some landmarks, things like that. And it's hidden around all the little parts. Now, I've, if you see specifically, I've added eight. Because basically, I'm just going to pin my eight papers to these locations, just so it's easy to find. And also, my map here is only about half a kilometer by half a kilometer. This was originally for the packages because the terrain info was so large and my free web post only allows me five gigabytes. So, there's a nice little landmark there. I wanted that to be some kind of north marker so everyone on that can kind of get a reference if you're completely lost. Look up. Okay, so hopefully you're at this stage. You've made your little terrain, you've made your little world, you really start scaring people. Okay, so, you've got the terrain. Add a first person control. Okie doke. Just pretty simple. Let's just flop to the bottom. Okay. So, assets, port package, character controller. I will bring in the third person as well. Some people probably want to know that it's that too. As you can see, I'm on Unity 3.5.7. I haven't migrated to 4 yet because I'm working with iOS Basic. And as much as I'd love to play with Mechanism, I'm not going to change uh, versions of Unity in between projects once it's finished. There's so many things on the go, I don't know when that's going to work. Okay, if anyone's ever imported this character controller in 3.5, you'll really see this warning here. It's very, very simple to fix this time. Should have my first. Anyway, you double click and let your um, script editor open, and it brings you straight to this line. I'm sure it up so quick. If input, okay, this symbol should be an all. Okay, simple as that. Let's save it out. That's all we need to do. Let's have a look at the unity. Ta da! Third person control fixed. Alright, back on track. So, we have our first person controller script. Uh, first person controller, click that. Okay, let's just drag that into the scene. Now, of course, beware, first person controller, main camera, is you. And by default, there's the main camera in the scene, so let's get rid of that quickly. And we'll align our first person controller. Somewhere in the world. Now, you just want to have a little explore of your train, see what it looks like, so let's add a directional line. Okay, let's have a play. What I usually do, you saw I roughly place my character controller. So, first play, 
I'll let it land. Without moving, I'll check where it's sitting on the y axis. Forward 9.3, so let's give it about 50. Right. Change that to 50. Right. First video, and I really made a mistake. I was watching the wrong thing. Okay, first first controller hits the ground. I'm going to buy it at 25.4 seconds. Combine, combine. Good enough. Okay, hit play. Let's have a look at the world. Feel free. Get some grass, get some trees, Let's have some beautiful cool view. Let's go shopping. Okay, so you can have a look around the world, see if you like the train textures look pretty good. The grass is pretty thin, but you still enjoy the grass. Around like in the game, we'll be looking for things like this. Right, tree glider works. Okay, so look at that, you've already finished step one. That was so quick, let's jump on to step two in the same video. As always, if you've made any changes, always save. Save, save, save. You never know. It's going to change as well. Okay, always pause. Level zero. Done. I'm going to pull past myself a little bit of it. So, scripts folder. The reason I use underscore is you see when you import so many assets, people normally open them, normalize like their C textures without any underscore. Anytime I see an underscore, I know it's more. Bacteria, some scripts, textures. There'll be more to add later, but I just want to start. Set the ambience and add a flash mode. Okay. They've created a train, we've added grass trees buildings, drops in the character control. Just going to quickly jump down to here for a skybox. I use the moonshine for the standard assets. Assets, import package, skyboxes. Um, that's all I want. So, to give the scene a more spooky feel, set the render settings. In Unity, navigate to Edit, Render Settings. Edit, Render Settings. Okay, so we have lots of lovely things over here. So, enable that the fog box is ticked. Set the ambient light to 29. I'm actually going to set the ball off. I'm going to set the ball off. Okay, so we're going to 
see, you see the whole scene is still like there was that friction of light from my first. Let's just get it. Set up hot, quite tense. I'm going to break you. There we go. And get light from the same thing. Give that quite a light color there. And we'll pop down to almost without light color. Okay, and now that sky looks material. Much to see here. As you see, it's pretty dark. I read about this trees lighting up. I'm going to do this now. I'm just following my route. I'm going to save that. So we don't lose our settings. So where are we now? Ah, to the flashlight. Create a spotlight. Make the child in the camera. Let's zero everything out. Camera. So it's transform. Okay, so we're raising it up. specific number. It's probably exactly how I write that number by using the sliders. Got some settings here. Some more precise numbers there. Range. Okay, so something starts with here. It's got angle 71.5. As you can see, I kind of want it shining. So it's down here. Slightly. Intensity. And there we go. Where are we? Now when you press play, you should be walking around the scene. Okay, things are starting to happen. Right. So working from there, advancing. I help someone with a flipping flashlight. Yeah, I thought this was a pretty cool script, a bit of fun. Something that could be adapted on too, as I explained here. Copy it. Now, a scripts folder. Great. That's what I am programming in this JavaScript. And this one's green. In. Ooh, the formatting is going a bit skewed. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to worry about that right now. But obviously, you want to go through and you want to read code and start in the top. Bring it back first. Alright, I will show you this. As you see there, I'm on the function update. The problem with one of these early braces, it will show me its reflective one. So, I can close it. So, Okay, so the same thing. 
Oh yeah, just going through. Edit that up. I don't have way of copy paste to get to the Okay. That of course will be attached to the light source. Let's look at the script works just in case. So let's get to read this. Let this copy past. Okay, we're talking about light intensities. Light enabled. So this is talking to the light component of the game object that this script is attached to. So obviously this script doesn't read it to the light. Okay. So actually, um, we could probably do this in one time. Okay, you see, I've only made the time in a max bit. Because it's initialized, initialized. I just want to demonstrate the distance. Okay, so somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds, the flashlight's going to start giving up. Go. Uh oh, uh, flash! So it's just running out. Okay, and what I've done is I've activated an F key. For now, all it does is gives the torch a tap, bang, back on for another 10 to 20 seconds. This 10 to 20 seconds is just the minimum and maximum for the There you go, the torch is starting to fail. Give it an F, the flash is back on. Now with the F, you can integrate into this and start picking up batteries around the scene. When you press the F, consume the battery. If you don't have the battery, keep the torch flickering. <laughs> just right on cue. And you could also lower the intensity, so eventually it's just useless to do more battery. That would be fun. Scramble around. Right. Now we are. So, we're up to section 3. For that, I shall start a new video. As this is my first video, I know the sound quality is not great just for my tests. But I shall see how this one went. Catch you on the next one.